welcome to NDE TV. I'm Peggy Robinson. Today's guest is Jeff Tolley, and he is in Canada, and he had a near-death experience, was it in 2012? 2010. 10? Okay. Yeah. You'd like to uh, start wherever you want. Sure. So I think it's uh, best to start um, before okay. the NDE, just kind of leading up to it. Um, so my past was kind of dark, if you will. I, but I went through when I was when I was young. I had a lot of trauma. I went through a lot of different types of abuses, and those things kind of manifested into drug addiction, really. And so I've always kind of struggled with drugs growing up, and that was always a thing for me. Numbing my pain was something that I the only thing I could really um, know what to do at that time. I didn't know there was any other way to cope. So drugs was uh, one of the things that worked as far as numbing all of that trauma and all that pain. And it just continued to get worse and worse. And um, it was the year before. So 2009, my younger brother had died from a, a drug overdose. And then that kind of, for me, um, was kind of the end, the beginning of the end for me, because with him being gone, we were very close, almost like twins. We weren't twins, but we were like twins. Um, we had the same friends. We did everything together. My brother meant the world to me. So I couldn't really imagine living my life without him. And so when he died, it was a huge blow. It was like that final nail in the coffin, I think, that just ended it all. I just didn't really want to be around. Um, so it lasted, uh, it was just a little over a year before it just got so How bad. How was he? I'm curious. What's that? How was he when he passed? How old was he? Your brother. He was 21 How, years old. Yeah, he was 21. 21. Yeah. And so, you know, he had a huge life ahead of him. And he was such a good guy, too. I just, you know, that old saying, the good die young. He really fits in that mold of the good die young because he was much better than I was. He was very, um, very compassionate, very caring. He always wanted to put people together. He was that I just that person that always made people feel better no matter how bad it was. So I just don't understand why it was like, why, 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 why him? Like <laughs> I should have been the one to go. And if anyone were to make bets on us, cause we were both in the same world, we lived very extreme lives and it would be like, they would bet on me. Cause I was worse, right? I was like the more extreme. He was the lesser of the two. I and, guess cause um, we look at death as a punishment instead of a reward. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just so weird. You're right. Like the, the idea that him leaving this world makes sense because he was too good for it. That that's the reality. He was just too good for this world we live in. And I feel like he needed to go or the suffering of this world. He always felt like it was just to a place of negativity and almost like evil. And he didn't, he didn't want to be a part of it. Yeah. And he didn't want to be a part of it. So, um, and it was a drug overdose with him. Yeah, it was like a drug overdose slash he had kind of a, a bad heart to begin with. But so he was born with kind of like a heart murmur. But the drugs thing really was it like he mixed drugs with alcohol and then like, you know, different types of drugs. And it was just I think it was just the end of it. So when he died, I was kind of the beginning for me. Like I've always kind of been um, attuned to spirits since I was little. I would see spirits, um, but that kind of numbed away and went away as I got older. But when he died, it was like that reignited in me because he came to me in a very strong way afterwards. And that kind of like, I don't know, it didn't really help, of course, because here I am trying to kill myself a year later. But um, was it because of really, his death? Um, that he that that he is came that to why me. you wanted to kill yourself? Yeah, I mean, that, that was that was kind of the fact that was the kind of the final factor. But it was there was many other reasons to why I wouldn't want to be here. Because, you know, I think the drugs, just the lifestyle, the, um, I didn't have anything to look forward to. There was no real future goals. There was no, I, I lived with a lot of shame and guilt. And I just was always running from or running and hiding from drug dealers. Or it just wasn't a good life that that I, I'm very proud of. Now, today, that's a different story. Like when I look back, I'm not proud of the things, but I'm proud I was able to overcome it all and turn right. my life around. I'm very proud of that. And then learning how to take my life from that and then transform it to who I am today is, is, is just, a, is a blessing for me to have gone through that, although very painful, but it's still a blessing. So my life is like, you know, all these different events leading up um, that it didn't make sense earlier, but they do now. So all these weird things that happened and now it's like, Oh, okay. I kind of see where, where we're going here. Yeah. 
And then on, it was July 17th, 2010, I woke up that morning in kind of a drug haze and that was it. I just decided that this would be the day that I took my life. And so um, I did so with pills. Actually, I had a big bottle of narcotic painkillers and I swallowed them all back, the whole bottle. And I, I did that in a sense of knowing too, that there was no way I can get out of this. So, you know, it wasn't going to take like 10 or something. I was going to take the whole bottle. That way I knew that it was going to be a solid, real thing and I don't have to, you know, whatever. And then everything went dark on me. And it was dark, I'm guessing for the time frame, it was dark for maybe about 15 minutes, but for me, it was like a, an instant. So it all went dark. And then all of a sudden there was some light, just light started to appear around me. And um, next thing I know, I'm now looking down at my body. You know, that old saying like, yo, we're looking down on your body absolutely happened to me. Another thing I want to kind of address before I go right into this is that like this experience happened to me. Um, I don't, you know, I don't think that this is what you know, I'm not saying that this is gospel truth, that it's going to happen to everyone else. This is my specific experience. And it, it I just appreciate, belongs to me. Yeah, it's my I appreciate my you saying that. Because so many yeah. come on and tell, you know, not just here, my show, but others. And they say, so when we die, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, dude, yeah. <laughs> you only know of one death. And that was, you know, we, yeah, we so don't I know for everybody. Absolutely. I cannot talk on other people's behalf. I know that like some NDEs universally have this similarity, but they're also very different. And that's mine was very different too than other people's. Like I've only, I've heard a few or whatever and yeah, it's, but there's a similarities, right? There's always that. I think what really kind of brings it all home is that we don't die. Like that's the main theme in this whole thing is that when we die, we don't die. And if anything, we are more in the, the, the live state when we're dead than when we are alive. So being on earth here, it's more of a dead state, in my opinion, um, yeah. than when we're gone. When we're gone, it's like we're in our true natural state. We're home, we're alive, and that's who we truly are. So the soul aspect of this is something I didn't have any sort of beliefs or religious backgrounds. I didn't have anything going on as far as what I believed in. So um, I kind of went in there with a fresh kind of, oh, we do have a soul. Oh, we don't die kind of thing. But I do also know of that with spirits, because like I said, I've had that seeing spirit thing. So I have an idea, I guess, that spirits are whatever, but I didn't have any real fundamental beliefs around what that really even is. So it's the idea that, oh, wow, like we are, we, we don't die. So that was kind of like the first thing, like I'm here now. It's not that we don't die, but it's like we're alive, but even more so, I guess what I'm trying to say, it's, it was shocking because we think of death as being the end but the end of something, whatever, and it is, but it's really the beginning of something even greater, in my opinion, like being it's like here. being so life. awake. <laughs> yeah, it's like being here is like we're being, we're actually almost put in jail. It does feel like we're kind of in a prison within our own bodies here, the way it's kind of set up. So it's like a freedom, you know, we're really freed when we, when we die. So kind of going back to that, I'm looking down at my body and um, I'm seeing myself from a very different vantage point now. I'm, I'm looking at everything around me, but what I'm noticing is that even though that this is happening, I'm like beside the world. So time and space is something that I don't, that is different. So even though, like you say, time and space on earth is very slow, even there, it was like, it's all one moment, but I still felt kind of this lingering time as things were happening, you know, one thing after another, but also all together at the same time. This is where it gets really confusing because it is like, there's a time outside of our life, but it's different time. It's a different time that yeah. connects to all things. Right. And then it's not only that, it connects to, yeah, absolutely. It's very, very interesting perspective. It's the perspective that changed me ultimately. So like, I'll get into some details, but it was really the perspective of my life and the view of my life from a different vantage point that changed everything thinking, Oh wait, the world and my life is not what I thought. So as I'm there as well, it's kind of like this idea of a review is absolutely what happened to me. So if we're in between or whatever you want to call it purgatory, I don't know, whatever you want to call this, there was an in-between world that I see myself in. I wasn't fully dead, but I wasn't alive and I was in between. And this is where I'm reviewing kind of my life. So I find that interesting too, because we hear about these life reviews and we think, oh, wouldn't that be neat? It's like, 
watching a movie of her life. What do we do right? What do we do wrong? And for me, it's absolutely true. Like it absolutely happened that way. I'm reviewing my life, but not in a way like a movie. It was, I'm reviewing my life through emotions. So the people that I have, you know, impacted in my life, whether that be positive or negative, I'm feeling their emotions and I'm seeing their point of view from what I've done to them. Now, being me, being the way I was, it was mostly negative stuff, right? So I would, I would affect them very negatively. I caused them a lot of emotional pain and um, other types of pains. And I see that, oh my God, like I'm just hurting myself by hurting other people. It was very apparent that we're all connected. What I do to others is actually happening to me on an emotional level. So karma plays in a big role here too. So karma's was another thing that I really learned about that kind of cause and effect karma as it's more of a tool for growth, not as a punishment, but you learn by experiencing what you've done so that you are a better chance to not do it again. Do you know what I mean? Like, so, so did you a, have a life review, like right away, as soon as you're out of body? Yeah. Cause once I was looking down and I realized about being gone um, and this is what happened, everything now started to come up when it came to my life. It just started to show up. It was like a holographic, everything seemed very holographic around me. And so that's what I was seeing. And then certain memories. Now, another thing, because they all go together, but there is a line to this. Um, and I may jump back and forth as I go through just to kind of, because that's just the way my brain works. But I, when I was looking down at my body, I seen that there was more than just the body. So obviously there was me um, outside. So that's one body, the soul. And then there's this physical body that I'm looking at. But then there is this emotional body. And to me, it looked like a blanket that wrapped over top of us, almost like, like the, um, the, the Buddhists and stuff. They wear these robes. It almost looked like a robe that is over top of us. And the robe takes on a weight and it takes on a, um, a darkness. So like a shade of dark or light and also has certain colors depending on, I believe, when it comes to the body and the aura, if you will. But for me, it was just dark. It was just black, heavy, dark blanket. And I, could, I knew it was the emotional body because it was like electrical. And honestly, it was like a storm. It, it could be like this. If our emotional body is, is the weather forecast for our life, for me, it was very dark, stormy, and gloomy. Um, that's how I just experienced. That's what my life was because that was the storm. My body was portraying that heaviness that darkness and that was that your for a depression lifetime of, yeah depression everything it was a lifetime of building up on emotions but not dealing with them as well because i never ever was able to deal with emotions let alone you know i was i was a, I, I would use drugs to yeah. always numb the emotional body this is where women i think have a great advantage over men because they are at least more in tune with that now i did eventually re release that those emotions but it was it took quite a while for me but um, it's just like walking around with this dark cloud blanket over us. And that I could see is what's drawing and attracting to us more of that same energy, if you will. And then I also saw it was like um, the mind as well is a different body. So it's like a halo, a donut. And it's the same thing. It can be dark and it can be light. And so it's the same idea that the body is not just a physical, but there's different aspects and they all kind of go together. They all affect each other as bodies go. And then obviously the soul body that I am now looking down at the rest of this going, whoa, I didn't really quite understand how these things work. Um, like I said, the perspective was very unique because it gave me this way of looking at my life and the world around me. Yeah. And uh, the people, like I said, that I affected, I, I could feel them. I could feel what I did. And this idea that I came into the world I set up some of these things to, to do. I set up my life. I set up this game, if you will. It was like almost like a game and there was a blueprint to my life and I was going to challenge this and I was going to do this and I was going to learn this, but it was obvious and very apparent. I failed everything under the sun. I didn't get one thing right. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> if life is all about choices, I failed. I was a big F in life. Um, and I just, I had to realize, oh my God, I failed it all. So, and I think that's why, I came back to be honest with you. That is one of the big reasons is because I needed to correct what was happening. So that kind of was the beginning of my NDE. And then my younger brother, the one that died the year previous, he now came into the picture and he started to walk towards me. 
And then it was more and less as if, wow, quite the ride, you know, what the journey. It was like that commodity, that, that brotherly love, like, oh, yeah, well, look at that. It was like that very much like my brother's spirit, the same way he would be. is like, way to go. You really messed this one up, didn't you? Oh, my God. <laughs> It was just, it was just interesting. Um, there is no judgment. That's the thing. Um, we think that, you know, we're being judged by God and this and that. There was no judgment. We like, we are our own judge, jury, prosecutor and defense. Like we are our own judge in our own lives. So we don't get judged. I never felt any sense of judgment. And I also, you know, on, on the kind of topic of God, I just kind of put this out there that it was very obvious to me. No one had to say anything, but it was obvious that we we're all a part of the one source not separate as a, as a creation of source. So we're all a part of the same stuff and that we're all creating our own existence without, by living within that stuff. You are being a part of that. So I didn't see any division as far as a creator and then creation. It was creation is creating itself continually expanding. And we are a part of that puzzle. So I just want to put that out there because I, you know, there's a lot of that, that talk around separation stuff. And I didn't, that's why I said, I don't, I didn't experience that whatsoever. And that's why I put out like, this is my experience and, and it is unique to me. And I also know, I think that people will bring on certain beliefs will come with you in this stage. I feel like, I think that if you have beliefs around certain things, you will experience things like seeing Jesus or things like that. I feel that kind of match the beliefs you've taken on to some degree, like to some degree, but they're, they're not as solid, if you will, when we're outside of our bodies. So my brother had done all that come to me and he wanted me to follow him. We went into this room and it was just all white. It was just like light just surrounds us. And then um, I was brought into a room and there's three beings sitting at a table. And these beings were just more or less, you're here, welcome, whatever. And, um, but we need you to go back. So it was like, uh, it was like, you know, it's funny because I felt like I was being coerced. Like when I'm back, I'm like, oh, those bastards, they tricked me. They tricked me into coming back. And I feel like, oh man, I can't believe they did that. But like at the time I didn't feel like I was being tricked, but when I went back, I felt, I kind of felt like they tricked me, you know? So I know that my Did you soul see was your like, brother as solid? The way he looked Yeah, he was more, he was just like me. He was very translucent and very energy. So we're not. So you saw yourself, you looked like that yeah, too? Yeah. Yeah. It's like an apparition of myself. It's like, if you were to kind of strip away the solidness, the way I look, my body shape is still there. It's just, you can put your hand through it. It's just, it's like that. Nothing out there was solid in any way. It was all translucent and light. So light the beings, they were that way part. too? Yeah, they were very light and the same way. Everything is basically the same way, um, the way it works. It's all very non-dense and we're in a whole other realm, kind of like just outside of third density reality, if you will. It's kind of- I just saw just outlines very... and bright white light, so. Okay. So you you yourself had an NDE too? Mm -hmm. Excellent, really, really cool. I'd love to hear about that eventually as well, for sure. So you didn't see any, so you saw outlines, light, and then, but uh, no bright white light. My, I had two NDs. I drowned when I was five and at 25 is um, yeah. when I was in heaven in the bright white light and I saw outlines of a panel of people and one was sitting up front oh. and center, still just an outline. And I knew instinctively that has to be God. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, it was the same thing, like beings, but not the outline. I'm seeing more of the people. So like, even they were wearing a dress, like as Victorian, but only two of them, the other one was like a tribal. So I, you know, I know a spirit guides, like call it what you will. They were beings that were from a different time era. Why were they wearing those clothes? Maybe it was an idea of a time era that they come from. I don't, you know, I don't have the answers to a lot of it. It's just, that's what they were wearing. Um, and that's who they were. I felt like they were very familiar. I knew them. There was like, we, there was this just deep, like, oh, we know each other, almost like we're family sitting around a table. And they were basically like, you are here for a certain reason. You are not done yet. We would like you to go back, but we're not forcing you to go back. It's a choice that you must make. But it was so easy for me to bake it because I saw before how badly I screwed up and that I, I didn't know like anything. And I was like, no, no, I want to go now. I want to go back. Like there was no, oh, I should I think about it or not? It's like, no, 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 I want to go and I want to do this. And then this room kind of lit up, a holographic image started to surround me. And what it was started to show me a future. And it was this beautiful future, um, things from castles to 
beautiful futuristic things, energy. Uh, the world looked very different. We'll just say that. It was incredibly unique, like very futuristic though, but in a, in a way that's not like flying cars or nothing, but it also didn't seem too far down the road. That's another thing that kind of was like, that doesn't seem too far ahead. I, in, the, in that image, didn't look too aged. Um, I would say if I were to guess, I was 50 years old. So that's only 10 years from now, really. Um, it just looked like the world changed so much in 10 years that it didn't make sense at the time. So it looks like we're going to go through a huge, massive change, I guess, because we have to in order for that, I feel like, to come true. Now, you know, kind of coming back and all that, the whole idea of what I'm seeing is making more sense as I go along. So, you know, that's kind of where we we're at, you know, as far as that going back. When I decided to go back, it was now I'm just, I'm back in my body, but it's like, oh my God, I'm feeling all that pain. I'm feeling all of that pressure. I'm feeling all of that shit that's built up in me that I now just release, like, to, you know, I wish I didn't even have it because then now I know the difference. I know the, I know a big difference between having all of it and then getting a glimpse of not having it was really hard because coming back, it now became very heavy, very dense. Oh my God. Now I got to deal with this body. That's all messed up. And the emotional body that's all heavy. So the, the remaining 10 years for me has really just been clearing it all out. So for the last, since I come back, it's been nothing but full-time work on myself, but I've been able to kind of do it differently because I understand more how it works. And it's been about understanding that life was more or less a game, I guess, to be played. And for me, it's learning the things that keep coming around over and over again as challenges. They just have different faces and saying, okay, I have to learn something here. So what's the lesson? And then pulling the lessons out and then growing because of the lessons. So there's been a lot of growth and changes in these years that have completely transformed my life. Um, absolutely, radically in so many ways. And, the, and also psychic abilities were a big part of this because that's not, you know, my, my story gets crazier and crazier as it goes. So I see my NDE and I know we're going to keep it to the NDE theme here and that's great. But my story takes a wild turn into some crazy what, stuff. Did, do you remember what after. you thought when you first come back? Yeah, well, I was in a hospital bed, um, handcuffed to it, to be honest with you. And I just remember feeling, why did I come back? <laughs> Like, what the hell was I thinking? I just like, oh my, it was like a big mistake. And I was trying to, to be honest, I was trying to kill myself again. Um, at, in the very beginning, I was wanting to remove myself back because it was just too much. Was your NDE fresh? In your fresh mind? As, in, as in your memory? Um, yeah, so definitely that's another thing. So yeah, absolutely. It was fresh to that degree. But then as time went on, it started leaking more. So I had this experience and it was what it is. But then time goes on and I'm now I'm leaking, things are leaking through and kind of giving the, the, the bigger, broader picture to it, right? So yeah, fresh and then also with drips here and there in the future. Yeah. Like it became more um, vivid or uh, understood more in your process? Understood, yeah, understood more. It was okay. more like there was layers to each lesson yes. or each thing that happened yeah and so as i continue to work on myself too i started to understand the layers differently and i was like oh so this was just more than just an experience it was like a multi-layered thing that i had to digest in specific time frames yeah pretty wild it's very very wild stuff i mean yeah. from the life that i was from living from leading the life that i had to that it you know i feel like though it's a kind of joke about it because it's like yeah well my rock bottom was death like i had to literally die to just change my life it's like some people get the message but i never it's just so it's just kind of funny because you think of how bad it had to get for me but it really did change me i mean there's no no two ways about it that was I well, we were young that. too yeah yeah you know you Absolutely. were in your i was 25 when i had my second one and yeah. so you know now i'm 60 and so I'm able to look back and, and understand things differently at the time. I, it was a shock factor. What in the hell was that? Yeah. What just happened? It, yeah. And you're right. And so you would understand as much as me that it, it take you start to you figure it out more or you get more clarity or more grounding with it as the years go on. Right. And I, you know, with everything that happened to me, so 10 years now, what 10, 11, 12 years, almost from the NDE stuff, I'm now actually where I feel like I'm starting to 
rebuild or ground enough to be normal. So it was like this entering back into the world was it was not just oh here i am i'm back and everything no 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 it's like i'm back but i there's something there's something missing in a sense or something that i need to develop to become fully back and to almost like own that experience enough to now even talk about because i've been quiet on these things for most of it i've just come out recently about a lot of the different things that happened and i just feel like maybe uh, i wasn't ready even even ready to talk right. about it Right. So now I, it's like, I'm ready now. I'm okay with it. Cause I've owned it enough to be like, if someone just doesn't, if someone rejects it, then that's their issue. That's not mine. I'm just going to speak from the heart and it will be received to those who understand what I'm saying. Other than that, I don't, I don't really care any other way. Yeah. It's kind of like a seed that's planted and it takes a while for it to sprout and grow. And, and then to, mm -hmm. you get your voice. It's just, for some people, I mean, they wake up immediately, they know it's a near-death experience, and they know, oh, I had an NDE, and, and they're good to go. But most of us, that's not the case. No, it was traumatizing. Like, honestly, I, I had PTSD throughout this whole thing. But like I said, the NDE was kind of the beginning of my real journey for me. Um, but it was very shocking, very shocking. And it wasn't easy for me to integrate what had happened and also what am i supposed to do with all this information it was like i don't know what to do with the information i was given right so that was hard at first too yeah. like what am i am i supposed to play my am i supposed to live my life like i'm playing a game now because that's kind of the structure and there's a blueprint am i supposed to now just follow that blueprint or like i was confused on what to do when i first got back but you're right over time it got better and better easier and easier and now i'm just i'm just me now so it's all good did you know it was a near-death experience when you come back? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because mine was 1986. So, I mean, there was no such word in, in my world, you know? Yeah. Well, it was, I don't know, mind. even if, even if the word, I don't, I'd be like, well, I died and came back because there was no, I think the, 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 if, okay, if I wasn't looking down on my body, maybe I would have thought it was a dream or I got knocked unconscious. I was in a coma, maybe. But the very real idea of looking down literally at my own body from a different vantage point and then experiencing these things from the people and seeing time as being beyond different and then connecting to not only this life, but also past lives. That's another thing that the soul is like accumulating all of this advanced teachings and like and, and knowledge and experience from and i mean way back way back so it goes all like it's crazy how far we have been around it's, it's insane it's, it's absolutely mesmerizing to think too that we are immortal beings so that idea i feel like has been squashed to some degree as in we don't end and when i think about this idea that we don't end this time here is very short and we have these experiences for growth and development and whatever, whatever we came here for, but we don't end. I just, the idea is so even today, it's, it's such a huge thought that we get to do this forever. I mean, it can be tiresome to think, but not all experiences are like earth either. So I believe in so many different types of experiences and, and realms and places and, and all kinds of beautiful things we can experience. Earth is a definitely a master school. It's like a place where we come to really learn hard lessons and really grow fast. That's how I see Earth, because it's not we all know it's not easy here. Did you start talking about it right away afterwards no. or did you wait? No, I only do really close people like close. Um, but but even then, not not really. Um, and then, you know, it got better. But like I said, as you get to learn a little more about me and my story forward, then, you know, then that stuff, I definitely had a hard time with what was going on with all that too. So. Mm -hmm. So did you notice a change in you? Yes, absolutely. And so when I came back, I always say that it's like not all of me came back. So one of the gifts I believe that's been bestowed upon me through having this is a little piece of me is kind of like above me seeing ahead. So I came back and it's like, we're in the forest and all we can see is the trees, but I can see a bit of the forest. I always got this view forward and it's coming from this higher place. And before it was always just, you're blind to what tomorrow brings. Well, now, since I come back, I'm not blind to it. I always have the insight of what tomorrow, next week, next month may bring not a hundred percent clarity. And it does change, but it does go towards what I'm kind of putting out now. And I will see glimpses and flashes. And that was really, really hard too, was when you see a, a, an image come in our mind 
And then the next day, it's the exact same image, just boom, right in front of you. And you're, you're really physically experiencing it. And you're like, whoa, like, you know, cause at first it honestly is like, am I going crazy? Like it, it like, cause I can't prove these things. That was another thing. So a lot of the stuff is in my head. I can't prove it. I can't get clarification from someone. Um, so I had to really go through this period of how real is this, even though I'm experiencing it, could there be, I don't know. It's just weird. You know, the, those, those psychic things were, were wild to, to really kind of control. And I feel like a big part of my struggle was I was too wide open. So when I came back, I was so open. I couldn't even go into a Costco without literally hearing and feeling everyone's crap. I couldn't be in large groups of people because it was just bombarding me with their stuff. And it was like almost noises, like chatter in my head and, and the feelings. And I was like, oh, I got to get the hell out of here. I can't handle this. And I was too open. And with that too, the spirits everywhere. So they would, they would always bug me to talk with family members or they need help. And I was like, can you please leave? Like, it was just so hard. It was like, I was this antenna to all things like that. And I couldn't shut it off. I couldn't do it. It was like, I thought it was going to drive me nuts and go insane, honestly. But um, eventually I learned to close off and I learned to shut down. I learned to like take the phone off the receiver. So the, the spirits, they knew I, I, I could, they could access me, but they knew I was closed for business. Like I, that took me years to kind of get that relationship enough to know, no, leave me alone. Or yes, I'm willing to talk to you. And then they do. So it was like a boundary thing I had to learn in another realm. So a lot of it was coming back was I have to relearn how to live my life with all this stuff going on without coming across crazy or right. whatever. And that was hard because I knew I couldn't talk to counselors. I, I knew I couldn't go to anyone because there was no one that was going to help me anyway. People didn't exist like this, like back then. It just didn't, it wasn't something I can go and reach out to. So I had to go through all the pitfalls and learn everything and go through all the mistakes myself until eventually, thank God, I'm, I'm better now. And like I said, it's that since 2010, so it's been almost 12 years. And that's basically as long as it takes, but I'm st even still today, I'm still not fully, I would say, you know, 100%. I don't know if I ever will be, because it's always this learning process. Yeah. 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 It seems to me like we have, you know, our five senses, but then have an NDE and we come back and we have more senses that we yeah. don't understand because most people around us don't have them. So yes. there's nothing we can learn about it or, you know, connect yeah. with other people about it. You're just on your own trying to figure out what to do with yeah. it. What is it? Are you crazy? And is it real? And you know, all those things yeah. <laughs> subjectively. Yeah. And unfortunately in society, it is taught that those things are crazy. They're not, they're not taught that, no, this is a real thing. This happens. That I, if, if I want to do something in the world, honestly, I want to be a part of it by saying what you're going through is real and natural and you can be helped. Right? I, I just feel like someone needs to stand up in a very grounded way and say, I've been through this. What this person is going through is not mental illness, but this person needs help with grounding and understanding what's happening. There's no place for that. Maybe there is. I, I just don't know. Yeah. So I, I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of helping. I think right. those who, who need that help in that way. And that's what yeah. I'm trying to do with these shows is, you know, yeah. I want to hear the NDE, but I want to discuss things like this more in depth because I call it the language of heaven, the way that we were communicated with on the other side often comes back with this and the way we're communicating with the world when we're back. You know, if we had telepathic communication, if we levitated, if there was angels, you know, if God spoke to us, you know, all those things, it seems like yeah. it comes back in such subtle ways or sometimes alarming ways that we're on our yeah. own. And then we can talk and say, yeah, I seen that too. Yeah, I, I experienced that. And like mine was real subtle for a while. It was just um, so uh, it's too many times, you know, to count as coincidence, I would uh, say a phrase as I'm talking and all of a sudden on the radio, the exact same words. Like what? Yeah. It was like, I was a step in front of reality. And it's like, yeah. this is happening too often. Um, yeah, it or all of a sudden, like, you know, who's going to call like, Oh, they're going to call me here in a minute. And here they, they call and just little silly things. And other yeah. times it could be full blown spirit crashing through yelling in your face, you know? <laughs> and, yeah. 
and trying to make sense of it and then trying to, am I crazy? <laughs> you know, yeah, where's where's the test to see if we're crazy on this? Yeah, I think, you know, when we come back, we're coming back, obviously, to the to, to where we are, the third density reality, but we're shifting off to a different, slightly different channel. So we're attuned to another channel that's kind of between certain channels. So it's like I see everything as kind of just like almost a satellite dish and we can have attuned to certain channels. And when we when we come back, we're now more attuned to the spirit realm because we were in spirit. It's like since I now was able to pull out of my body, I can now pull out at will. I could astral travel if I now I can have that ability to do so because my, my soul can now pop in and out. And now it does it all the time when I'm sleeping. And it just it drives me nuts. But it's happening now constantly because it's come out. Right. So now we're just more attuned to the spiritual world, if you will. And a lot of the NDEers, there's no understanding of that world. It's not in literature. It's not something you can really study. It's better now, but I feel like it'll get better more and more as we go on too. Cause we really, we really, like I said, we need something like that to help those that are going through that. I mean, I, my God, I don't, what could it have been? Like, I, it really hurt my life. It really, I mean, my life wasn't good to begin with, but it really hurt everything moving forward i mean it really did it messed my family up i uh you know my friends like it, i mean it messed everything but maybe i needed that too to rem remove all that i you know i get that but man it, it didn't make it easy like you know it wasn't it wasn't easy um i guess that maybe it's a part of it so it's like learning a new language because you were different and trying to cope with being different and, and them trying to cope that you're different like is that what you yeah. mean yeah and then sharing things Right. And then sharing things, I guess, that not necessarily maybe uh, I learned pretty quickly that there's things you should just keep to yourself. Uh, I don't know. I, I felt like, you know, sharing things was my way of maybe helping or helping myself because I needed to get it out to it. That helped me. Like when I actually was able to find someone in my life that I just like dumped all my stuff on, it helped me so much. Um, and I didn't have anyone because I got the opposite of God from help. I got people that were really attacking me i became uh, uh, viciously attacked by my own family members and people that i i trusted um that's not so much nde that's some other things that happened to me but you know when, when things happen to you you go through something i was just scared like i think that's really what it was i was scared and i was reaching out to the wrong people right because people didn't ex exist the ones that i think i needed now that I'm not scared, it's so funny and I'm all better. Now all those people, they're in my world now, right? So it's just so funny because man, you're I needed you way back then. I you know I needed someone like that. So it's it's interesting how that works. Yeah. I started yeah. talking and I stand in front of my husband. I'd be all animated and I would be all excited. And I would be telling him these memories of the NDEs and these spiritual things and and I would just be like this because I couldn't believe what was coming out of my mouth. And I was watching his face to see, is he rolling his eyes? Is he <laughs> yawning? Is he yeah. thinking I'm going to have to call a squad for, you know, <laughs> and I'm judging, you know, how much I can tell. And he's just looking at me and he's listening. And then it got to a point. He's like, okay, now you're entering a point where I don't understand you anymore. It's like, he could follow me, but then I started getting so deep into it as I started to understand it better and I yeah. started wanting to express to him, now I understand. Like, how do you explain to somebody be in more places than one at once? Yeah, it's tough. In, you, can't, in you, know, you can't even figure it out yourself and then you start to figure out, and, but then you try to explain and there's like, that's beyond me. You know, I was like, well, I have to find somebody else <laughs> because I really need to keep talking about this and understanding it. And, but mine yeah, was, and it came to a point where I had to own it. I had to realize I, I, I cannot tell this until I believe it myself. And that yeah. took years because yeah, I would no can't be true because of this. Like, but it is true, but this matches this. And then I come to the conclusion. The only thing that made sense is that it was true. And once I realized that it's like, I owned it. I said something the other day. It's like, you know, how you're dating and you think maybe you want to get married, but it's not time is you're not sure. But then when you go up and you schedule the church and you sit up there and say, I do, and you own it. And that to me, yeah. that's what it was like with my NDE. Yeah. I had to get to that point where I owned it. And this is the way it is from now on. 
Yeah, I know the absolutely. truth and I'm not backing off the truth and people can roll their eyes. They can say whatever they want, but I am speaking this truth. And my truth comes out of gratitude because I was told it was my time, you know, that I couldn't go back and I want to yeah. go back and raise my boys and the gratitude that I was able to come back and raise my kids when so many women have died in childbirth because mine was a dual pregnancy or whatever reason mothers have died and been, not been able to raise their kids, but I got to come back and I was told it was my time. And so I have gratitude that yeah, I got to raise my kids and now I get to see my grandchildren growing up. And, and so, you know, people can laugh because I feel like I'm not going to go to heaven someday when I'm dead, you know, next time. And God say, I gave your life back to you. Why didn't you tell anyone? Yeah, I, I, and I, I me agree. Say, because I wanted to look cool. Yeah. Because I didn't want to be embarrassed because they called me a liar or they, and I really could see that playing out. And I thought that day is not going to happen. When I d go back, yeah. I want to be able to say, I did everything to tell what I saw here, what I experienced here, not to embellish not to you know make up lies about god or heaven or you know i want to yeah. i want to do a good job you know it's just this is what i want to do absolutely i feel like it's a grand test but it's also a test to understand who we truly are because i didn't know well I'm, i always kind of felt this inner strength but it was never out on public display or out in that way where i owned in that i feel like when you own something too and you are coming from a place where you've owned it, people then tend to listen more and not be so, you know, off put -ish too. So when you are coming from that place of knowing, it's felt from the listener and, it, and there's a different response because that happened to me when I started really owning this, my experience and everything that's happened to me and I own it, it's, there's a different command with it. Like there's a different um, energy behind what I'm saying and people are like, well, okay, like it's, not, it's a, but when you're coming from a confused, I don't know place yeah. and then, they're picking up the whether that you're confused and you don't you're unsure too and then it becomes this unsurety back but that owning it you're right is so important to just be like this is what happened this is what it is and it's so important too i think when it comes to things like this just be so radically honest too like i honesty is so important in this and that i think is part of the test too are you going to go back and be honest about this or are you going to embellish it and act like you know this ego bound person, are you going to do the right thing with this information? And I feel like it's the, those of us who have experienced this, it's like a gift. Are we going to spoil it or are we going to take it and do the best we can with it? And I've always just said, you know, for me, obviously coming from um, the place I came from, the life I came from, obviously lying was a part of that world. I'm not going to lie. It was a part of that world, but I made a choice and a decision in my life years ago. I would never lie again because it's more important to tell the truth and then whatever they think they think, then lie about it. To, like you said, to be accepted. I feel Let the chips fall where they may. Yeah, absolutely. Cause there's no point anymore. Like lying was just me being embarrassed of my actions and choices. That's all lying was all about is I am too ashamed of everything I'm doing. So I have to lie about it. I'm not ashamed anymore. So I'm going to be truthful. But here's another weird thing though. When I started being truthful, I wasn't believed, but when I was lying, I was believed all the time. So I found That's that funny. really odd. Yeah, That's very funny. odd. Yeah. I have a it's, sister who's a compulsive liar, and people <laughs> would believe that ridiculous stuff, but I would be standing here telling the truth about something and be, nobody yeah. believed me all the time. Wild. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. I don't understand the lies like and how they're so, but it's like the truth falls on deaf ears. It's like, I don't know, yes. there's something about the truth that with people, it's, it's like they're allergic to it. It's like they don't want nothing to do with it. I thought that the truth would be so important to people, but I was wrong. I was so wrong. I thought the truth is the most important thing of all. They would want to know, you know, the truth. And oh God, was I wrong? Oh my Lord, I was so wrong about that. <laughs> yeah, they don't want anything to do with it. Nothing to do with it. Nothing. Um, and that's not everyone, of course, but there's a large amount of people that it's like they don't want their worlds messed with and that's what it comes down to they have their beliefs they're set in stone and when you start making them question it's like they're questioning their whole identity it's like their livelihood is built on these beliefs and how dare you attack their livelihood their identities right and that's what's going on so they'll fight against you and if they don't Those life reviews are the truth absolutely they're all gonna uh, learn yeah yeah. And that's exactly what it is. I mean, seeing that 
for me and feeling what I did to others, I now make an account every single day to not be like that. And I just changed myself. But, you know, this change didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen right. when I came back either. I was changed when I came back. But it wasn't for 10 years of consistent inner work that really altered me for good. Yeah. Now I'm a changed man, but change takes a lot of effort and time and a lot of work. And I think that's why, you know, people don't change. It's like, why don't people change? Well, because it's work and it's hard work, really hard work. And it doesn't pay you money. Like you don't get paid money for it. So <laughs> it's like a lot of hard work that you don't get. You only get paid in your change. That's what the, that's what the pay is. Yeah. The results are your change. But most people are so very focused on the outer world, the money, the mortgages, the family. Like I, I get all that stuff, right? So doing this work is not, it's on the bottom of their list uh, is what I would say. Yeah. When I first got in the white light at 25, the very first thought I had before I seen the panel of people was, wow, it's real. The whole God, Jesus, heaven, Bible thing. Even though I hadn't seen anybody yet because I was somewhere else, you know, I was, in heaven, yeah. obviously, it was this bright white light. I looked down, I didn't see me at all. And I, because I was, I knew I had just died. I went through the tunnel and I had all these thoughts. I was like taken way out, up, up, way through space. And I'm, and I thought, wow, it's real. And I remember so vividly thinking, hey, God, <laughs> like, where is that? You know, um, you need to start sending people back down to earth <laughs> so they can tell that this yeah. is real. I didn't think it would be me at all i didn't think i was going back you know i was just like that was it and you really need to because in the tunnel i thought oh god i want to run away i want to find a way to get out of here go back to my kids and i was going through like so many galaxies i'll never find my way back and so i thought you need to send people back because you know the bible's getting old and you know people getting tired <laughs> of the bible and they're not believing that anymore and maybe if you sent people back to say this is real and and so weird you know, because then when I seen a panel of people and I seen God, I, I thought, oh, I, I got a complaint department. And so I started screaming and carrying on like a fool demanded to go back to raise my kids, you know. But just in that yeah. first split moment, I remember thinking that. And that sometimes I do yeah. these podcasts. It just seems so weird that I'm sitting here doing this and feeling like this is exactly what I was meant to do. Absolutely. I think, you know what, these platforms allow for people to get this out to other people that are looking for answers too and you know maybe you know it's it's going to take maybe what someone says is will we'll connect to someone and what someone doesn't will to another person but it will I feel like it will help someone along their journey of understanding or or just being better or doing better or like I look at my life as always something I want to make better and develop on and improve my character improve the um kind of the morals that I've built up now that I never had in my past but now I have these strong morals and I now live by them. And um, because of that, because of that, that, that NDE, I mean, if, if it wasn't for that, I just don't, I don't know where would I be. And that, you know, the whole idea, like I never, you know, who would have thought you, who would have thought me, my God, I was the horrible person back in the day. And I never asked for any of this, but it's one of those things where I think that that odd man out, that odd person out gets chosen for a certain reason too. You want to have a certain way about you that people can open up to you or, you know, yeah. my message comes different because of my past maybe, or I can help someone say, doesn't matter where you were, you can change that and you can, you can do better. Right. Like it's like certain people get chosen for certain reasons that we don't even really know ourselves. Yeah. And you know, somebody might relate to my story, you know, or they might relate to your story, but not to mine, yeah. you know, vice versa or somebody else's because yeah. you know, some people may not, um, understand this people talking about oh it's so beautiful and i felt the love and yeah. i know i'm sitting there thinking huh what are you talking about because i need to see step by step what you saw what you experienced you know i i need to follow it and this say these wide comments like i felt this and i knew all this and uh, it was times a million and i'm like i don't get it but then i yeah. hear some other people's for whatever reasons like wait a minute that just clicked with me and so, yeah. you know, they're all different, but everybody's all different. Just listening to them. It's going to connect with, and I found a, something, it seems like um, more often than not, in the ears, seeing a lot of them, not all, seem to have been abused children. Yeah, I mean, I was, and I, I think you're probably correct to go, that could be something uh, across the board for some reason. I think God adopts us. Yeah. 
I think he adopts us abused kids, and I think maybe that might be partly the reason why we're given another chance. Yeah, we messed up, yeah. but, you know, it's kind of like a mercy thing. But I can see how you got to that decision, and I'm going to give you another try. I think it's mercy. Yeah, it's interesting. for You know, for me, I could say, like, maybe not living the best way I could, but I've always had a big heart. I've always been good. I was born good. I knew that when I was young. I was a very, very open-hearted, caring person that changed with the abuse and everything else. And you talk about God and second chances stuff. I honestly feel like it was my second chance, but it wasn't just handed to me. The level of pain and anguish and stuff I had to deal with when I came back almost felt like I was being punished. It felt like a real punishment. So yeah, you get to see this and everything, but I'm not doing it for you. You have to earn your way back to what you were when you were young. And so going through all this, it was like, I know it's a, it's a, it's a biblical reference, but it totally rings true for me. What happened was I brought myself back to the child and it's like that idea of being like a child or whatever. And I brought myself back. I deprogrammed it all. I brought myself back into the point where I'm now remembering when I was one years old, memories that were completely gone. I'm in the memory of when I was one years old, two years old now. And I'm like, wow, I'm, I'm like that state of being. So I'm an adult but I act like a child and what I see, I see it for the first time almost. I'm experiencing my life from that point of, of view because I don't have all that stuff yeah. built up in me that I built yeah, up. It's like their characters life. in our story instead of in here in this yeah. turmoil. They're now like characters we can say, okay, this is a toddler, this is a child, this is a, a teen. Yeah. Have you written a book, your memoir or anything? Yeah, I'm, I'm in the process of writing a book. That's something that's going to take a while, especially because I'm not, a writer per se, but I have one hell of a story. So definitely a book is something that's in the works. It's just something I've been working on for years. It just doesn't seem to, I don't know. It's like, I have what a couple hundred pages written. It just feels like I need some real assistance in getting this done so that it's done properly. That's where I'm for at. For me, it, it was it, timing. It's like, I would start yeah. to scratch stuff, not for like a book, but just for me a notebook. And I, Oh, I don't want to deal with this. You know, this is so much child abuse. And then for me, yeah. it was just one day, it's like this light bulb come on and I, gr I had this little vision and I grabbed my laptop and I just started, I didn't stop for three months. It was like, it was oh, the okay. time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and maybe, there, somebody maybe says, people say, you got to write another book. I was like, no, that was it. And if I ever <laughs> get that inspiration again, yeah. then the, where I feel like I'm just going to grab it and go, then yeah. Okay. But just to sit, no, I think I'll, mm -mm. I'd have to wait for the inspiration. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, definitely, I've gotten a lot into it, but you're right. I think it's it's about the focus, it's the inspiration, it's the timing. I've learned a lot about timing in this, and that it's sometimes you just kind of when you're ready, you're ready. It's weird because all the way up till you're not, you're not. But it's like the moment it comes, it strikes you, and it's like I'm ready. I'm just ready, and it's really weird how that happens. But absolutely, there's a timing. I think for me, I've been on this journey very alone, and right now I'm kind of in the process of meeting the right kind of people. But I feel like um, there's going to be the right people are going to come in to take my message and bring it out there on a bigger scale, help me with my book, help me with my business, what I'm doing, and really kind of take me to where I need to be as far as whatever I'm doing in the world, right? So I kind of take that to the next level for me because I've just, it's just been all me. Now, what is this so academy you have? What is that? So, yeah, it's called the Night Sky Academy, and there's different factions to it so it's really uh, a mentorship program and just like we'll be describing i help people go through the inner work i help them deal with some of the limiting beliefs they might have things that are holding them back i help them with emotional releasing techniques and how to help them you know deal with emotions better so that you become more in charge of your emotions not the other way around i help them basically take them from where they are and help them design a life that could be a lot more fulfilling and positive and happy and it's just, it's just like almost like a life coaching, but it, it's different because there's a, there's this idea of the awakening kind of journey is a part of it. And those who are struggling with NDE stuff, going through psychic ability stuff, um, those who are having whatever happened, the awakening process, and they're confused about the world and what's going on, then it's kind of wraps up all in that idea. And then I'm in the process of building like my own mystery school. So it goes back to some of the ancient mysteries and stuff like that. We go into more teaching, more ancient knowledge and wisdom, but that's like another kind of thing, but that's something you do after kind of the, the inner work kind of stuff. Um, so that's like the Academy in a nutshell. Okay. It sounds yeah. very needed. 
Yeah, and yeah, I, 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 I realize that too, and I agree. Um, that's what I wish. I built it so if what I what I could have. So what I felt I needed, that's for who I built it for was myself. And um, you know, it's it's doing really well. I have some clients that are getting great success with it. So I'm so happy that, like you said, you know, you're doing this thing with the podcast and stuff. And it's like you're you're living your life on purpose. I feel the same way. This is what I was here to do. I was here to transform my life and then help others kind of bring them along the best way I could. Um, yeah. And the so timing too, where people are really searching right now for answers, trying to make sense of things as I'm sure you are too. And I am too trying to make sense. It's nice to ha have a ability to kind of be grounded a little bit at least and, yeah. and try to add yeah. a voice of reason in there. Yeah, Even as far absolutely. out as our story sound, I mean, but yeah. there's a grounding. Yeah. Absolutely. No, you're right. Like I've grounded myself so well that when I speak, even though it might seem crazy, it's like, well, he's too grounded. He's too, he's too good. He's doing too good to be crazy. So they get this weird thing with like, oh, well, he sounds so crazy, but he's not, he's totally not. He's put together. He's got a good life going. You know, he, he pays his bills. Um, it goes against what they would think is a crazy person. Um, I think what really separates me is my experiences. Honestly, I think the, the being in it, living it, having these things happen, going through it, changing my life, it really does separate me from a lot of people. And then that way I can give better insight because I've made the mistakes and I just want to help people through the confusion. Like I was confused. Um, that's kind of my main goal is just helping and teaching some things that are fairly complex, but I kind of simplify them in my own kind of special, unique way. I'm a very different voice in this world too, because I'm a young man. Um, I'm not your typical kind of like stereotype. Are you like 30s? So, yeah, I'm 39. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just, it's, it's, uh, I just got to get a unique um, attitude for sure. It's not, I'm not like your, I'm all holy kind of like put together meditating type. You'll get there. I, As you yeah. get older, you'll get there. I mean, yeah, just, a, things come with age <laughs> and I, in absolutely. the ears, especially. Yeah, um, there's definitely, I just have a different, a different way of, I think. Right. Yeah, You're doing you're great. Right. You're doing yeah. really good for, I mean, I wish I, at 39, I still wasn't talking about my stuff. You're, oh, you're okay. way ahead of the game as I, where I was. How long did it take you to finally get out and, and talk about things? Well, um, it was a few months after my 25 year old NDE that I started talking about it, told a couple people and they kind of shut me down. Well, one, my husband said he knew I was telling the truth, but I mean, there yeah. was no books that I knew of, you know, I didn't know even what to call it to look in the library for anything. Um, and so I let it go until I got with my um, husband. Um, we've been together, married 24 years now, but um, so maybe like 10 years into our marriage, I started opening up about okay. some of the experiences. I told you some things when we first started, um, you know, when we first married. But I had so many kids, I was going to school full time, working full time, you know, all this stuff. I had a lot of foster kids in and out, and then we adopted kids and stuff. So I was just really busy. Mm -hmm. But one day, uh, it was probably mm, 10 years ago or more, um, I was up, and I never got time alone because I was so busy. And I was up in my bedroom clean, doing some deep cleaning, and I had a radio, and I was kind of messing with the channel, and I found a Christian uh, channel which I really liked because for, I just heard the old type, you know, Christian music and it was more upbeat stuff. And I got really into it as I was cleaning and mm -hmm. some of my spiritual stuff just started coming flooding back. And I went and got the adopted kids, nine of them, and they come and sat around and I started crying, telling them some of this stuff. They're like, mom, you know? <laughs> and then like a few days later, we had a downpour rain. And I took them outside and baptized all of them and, it's like something opened up <laughs> right on. Yeah, and I didn't awesome. know, you know, I was just full of this joy and everything. And then yeah. we tried some different churches because my ex was Catholic. I didn't really want to go back to that. And it yeah. ended up decided to go back in the Catholic church. We got kids confirmed and my husband in the church and, and, but you know, then it's all kind of dumbed down into the church religion stuff again and nothing spiritual. And, and so uh, yeah. and the internet, I started, you know, we started learning how to use the internet and, um, and I thought, well, what do I want to look up? Because, you know, now we got this ability. 
I was yeah. like, well, what do they call that? You know, like near death experience, are you sure the type right word? Okay. And I found NDRF. Um, near death experience research foundation and i typed in it says submit your story and i couldn't get that in fast enough and it just yeah. snowballed from there how long did you um what, how long you've been doing the show for i started uh 316 march 16th this year oh okay excellent i wanted and to start it on 316 good. so yeah you have quite a few um people already that have been on hey so that's really yeah. that's really good. yeah that's when i actually started the nonprofit into etv but i didn't have any shows on till by late april because okay. I didn't know how, like I started something, I didn't know yeah. how to do it. I didn't know how to do Zoom. I didn't know how to edit. I didn't know how to do anything. Zoom. But yeah, I just decided thing. one day, I'm doing this. And I yeah. would sit here and cry because I didn't know how. <laughs> I was the same way with computers. I honestly skipped the whole era. I didn't even get my first smartphone till last year. And I just skipped the whole thing. And I've been now on this mad rush to figure out how the computer works. And it's been a, it's been a journey. Um, you know, when you're trying, there's so many things about it oh my god it's just endless with what you can learn and i feel like people have grown up kind of learning it piece by piece and it's become a part of their life and it's like i was so far behind so learning all the things zoom and, and emails and everything just everything that that i had to figure out with my online company was really ridiculous because there's so many moving parts to a company that works online and oh man but you know it was worth it in the end um yes. but you're at same thing i'm doing this and that's it i'm just gonna do it because if i don't where will I be? I will not be living the life I feel like that I should be living. I know that I'm supposed to be sharing my story and helping others. I know that, that, that I know it. So if I'm not doing that, I, I'm just going to find myself again, depressed and miserable. And who knows where at that point. So I, have I to kept hearing, that. don't wait, time's wasting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's really good. And uh, I'm definitely glad to have met you. Um, for sure. And I, I want to know more too. I'd love to learn more about your own story as well. I think it'd be really neat. So you probably have though, uh, your yeah, own story. Um, there. If you um, Google uh, Peggy Robinson, NDEs part one and two, there's okay. two films out there. They're free on YouTube. Yeah. It's okay. my and name you you and then NDEs part one. And you if you look book. on my channel, it's on there. They're both on there. Oh, okay. Excellent. Yeah, no, I know. I would love to, to definitely check that out. And um, it's been really nice meeting people like myself and have similar stories and, and having these talks. I mean, it's changing my life as well. And just to get it out, I always feel like another layer of relief comes off me when I share my story again. And it's just like, it's nice to finally be able to own that, like I said, and get it out. Have you connected to the IONS in Canada International no, Association Near Death Studies? No, I was asked that about? before, but pardon me. Um, no, I was asked about that before. I haven't even heard of that until okay. just kind of recently. There, so, there's some um, chapters there. There's groups. Okay. Yeah, I would just yeah. put I A N D S or IONS International Association Near Death Studies, and okay. then Canada, and then find one in your area because they're they're in your area. Sure. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think the guy's name. Huh? Okay. Is it just like a support group? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was in it and I had yeah. two groups. I was getting ready to start an international online group and it wasn't a good fit for me because they, they were yeah. promoting abortion. They were using NDEs to promote abortion and I'm pro-life. Whoa. Why, why would they use, well, they were using NDEs to, yeah. um, okay. They started okay. using them what? to make political for political, you know what I mean? They're using it for political reasons because they're it's popular now. And, so, and that and they, they've had a good organization for decades, but they I was told we're liberal and we're pro-choice and we don't want anybody pro-life and conservative and leadership. And um, it was a big thing. And finally, I resigned. But but, you know, I mean, you're in Canada. I mean, um, but, you know, if there's something you don't believe in, because like some people call me like they go to Ian's groups like. Peggy, I was told I can't say God and I can't say Jesus. They were trying to, they got an agenda. So don't fall on the agenda. Be, be firm with them. But I mean, but it'd be yeah, a good support group. I, um, yeah, I, got, I, I mean, it's funny because, you know, this whole thing of kind of, you know, kind of done on my own. And I did that for reasons too. I actually didn't even purposely, I didn't go out. I didn't go online and look at different things. I didn't, I don't, I maybe have three, NDE stories under my belt as far as other people. I don't, I don't watch them. <laughs> I just don't. Um, okay. 
I have my own. I've heard other ones and that's great. But I, I've kind of have my own thing when it comes to my own idea of what is what. And I've done that to, to basically keep myself away from maybe even buying into other ideas and things like that. I want to keep my message pure enough for my own experience. And I've, I've purposely kept away from a lot of these things. And, you know, with people and stuff too, I always find that, you know, everyone has their own opinion on their own stuff. And, and when I start involving myself with other people, I just feel like things kind of don't you're go right. away. You're right. So I and it's to good to do people. what you're doing while you're writing a book too. A lot of people won't hear anybody else's NDE while they're writing a book. Like they're afraid it'll be, it'll yeah. tank them or something. I never, I didn't worry about that. I knew my memories were so strong and I wasn't going to get meshed in by anybody else, but. Yeah. And I, I get that. I would never mesh in my, my story is what it is. And there's no, there's no changing it. There's no altering it. There's no, you know, there's layering it where it's multi-layered and I can go more into the layers, like through a book, of course, and get more out there. Um, but definitely have an interesting story for sure. So um, if you watch book, Netflix, um, yeah. surviving death on the first episode is the only one that's good of them because it's by NDEs okay. or, S or med mediums and whatever. But um, there's a guy from Canada on there that has a group. I don't know okay. if it's Jose is his name or what it is, but you'll recognize him um, okay. on there probably because yeah. I think it says where they're from or their name. Um, okay. He's a darker hair guy, older guy. And uh, he's from Canada. He has a group, an IONS group there. I mean, okay. it's just, you know, if you ever get to that point where yeah. you want to like it, uh, speak at a group or something, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I could check it out. I can see what it's all about or whatever. I mean, um, yeah, definitely something to be honest with you. I mean, my like I was saying before, my NDE is was was almost it's I think it was the beginning of everything else. Like I see my NDE as the it was kind of the the least kind of like the least I don't know impactful thing that happened to me, although it was very impactful. But as things went on, like I had other experiences with other things that just totally blew my mind and changed me forever. Um, but the NDE def is, it was the beginning of my awakening, right. if you will. It really did begin everything for me. And so, so many things happened to me that the NDE to me is not necessarily a focus of mine. Um, I'll talk about it and everything and share everything, but I have other kind of focuses that I, that I do and I kind of stick there as well, but I'll check all that stuff out. And I okay. love getting, you know, gaining more, uh, especially with people like I love, I want I think meeting other people like myself has been crucial because I have yet to meet anyone in my area like me. So I'm meeting people in the, in the United States and in Europe and Australia, like all over the world, really, but they're not here. So I feel very alone. And I think that that loneliness has definitely changed me and affected me and not the best ways because I've been very lonely throughout the whole thing. But yeah. um, it's an awesome feeling to, to go to yeah, a group definitely. and there's other indie ears and but just have that remember yeah. i warned you yeah be oh, careful don't let them tell yeah. you that you can't be this or that or the other for any reason to be included mm -mm. interesting Very just don't ever do that yeah absolutely because okay. i was heartbroken over it and i don't want anybody else to get blindsided so just you know no going in yeah but, uh, Stick this is why I don't like groups. This is why I don't. I just don't like groups. Is for that reason. Things yeah. Tend, tend to take an agenda, and I don't like it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I would just go and speak. You know, I would go and tell my yeah. experience, and and then okay. I started two groups, and I would invite people to come in and tell their experience. Okay. But just to go yeah, okay. and mingle and hang out, now yeah, I'm not that kind of person either. So. Yeah. Okay. For sure. Well, thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Absolutely.